ceramics units. Ceramics is my favorite art form, so I'm really excited about it. Ceramics is basically creating things out of clay, taking that clay and firing it to a really high temperature. The clay literally changes chemically. It goes from being clay to being ceramic. There are five steps in the process of creating ceramic art. The first is the clay. Um, clay is basically a mixture or recipe of minerals and materials with water to create a substance with a good te texture and um, consistency for us to build out of. There are many, many kinds of clay. There's red and brown, there's porcelain, which is a really fine white clay. It's really coarse and really dry, more than you can imagine. And they have a lot, a lot of uses as well. You see clay a lot in your dishes at home. You'll see it in porcelain caps in your teeth, your toilets, your bathtubs, even in a lot of electronics. And as we'll be using in this class to create beautiful pieces of artwork. Clay is a really wonderful material, but it's very picky in how it's treated and how it's used and when it's strong and when it's weak. So it's really important that you learn the proper techniques for using the clay so you can create whatever that you want. The most important thing is the balance between wet and dry. Clay is a mixture, like I said, of materials and water. If it's too dry, it starts to crumble and fall apart, kind of like a really gross old cookie. And if it's too wet, it starts to turn more into a mud consistency, gets really weak, falls down and slides. So you want to find a good in-between where your hands aren't covered in mud, but they definitely have a little dirt on them. The second most important thing is wedging. Wedging clay is basically smushing it and turning it to get all of the air bubbles out and to make it an even consistency so that there aren't really hard dry pieces and really soggy wet pieces, but they're nice and even. And to wedge clay, you um, start with a ball, make it start as a ball, and you can kind of bang it down on the table, initially get all the big air pockets out. You're compressing it and smushing it all together. And then you're gonna put it on a hard surface and push against it, fold it up, push against it, roll it up, push it against it, roll it up, so that you're removing those air bubbles but not creating new air pockets. As you continue to do that, the clay should start to make a good spiral. If you're having trouble and feel like you're folding, then you're pressing forward too hard. So just kind of ease up on the pressure and make sure you're pressing forward and down evenly to create a good roll and spiral effect. Wedging is hugely important because if there are any air bubbles in our clay during the firing process, they burst out of the clay and blow a big hole in the side of your piece as well as the pieces of the people around you in the kiln. There are two basic techniques for creating um, artwork or anything really out of clay. One is wheel throwing. So on a pottery wheel, um, you need a piece of equipment, water. It takes a lot of skill and a lot of practice, but it's a great amount of fun. The second main one is hand building. Hand building you can do with a table or the floor, or whatever, your hands and your two hands and pieces of clay. Under hand building, there's coil, pinch, and slab that we'll talk about more in depth in the future. The most important thing to remember about any kind of hand building is that when you're connecting two pieces of clay, you have to score and slip them together. It's like putting your hands together. If you just press them together, someone could very easily pull them apart. If we press two pieces of clay together, as they dry and fire, they remember they're two separate pieces and want to pull apart. But if we interlock our fingers and make one strong hand instead of two separate hands, then it's really hard for people to pull them apart. The same goes with clay. If we connect those pieces and intertwine them so that they're one solid piece, they forget they were two pieces and like to stay as one. Clay must dry completely inside and outside and all the way through the center before we can take it to the next step, which is firing. If it doesn't dry completely, when the clay heats up, the um, water particles get hot faster than the clay particles. And when things get hot, they expand. So the water particles don't have anywhere to go and they kind of stretch and blow out the sides of your piece. So it kind of ruins your artwork. And sometimes the pieces are large enough that they ruin the other pieces of artwork in the clay as well. So it's really important that the clay dries completely. It's also important that the clay dries slowly. Because if clay dries unevenly or too quickly, it starts to get weak. Some parts dry fast, some parts will dry slow, and they really start to fall apart. Drying is a really stressful time for a piece of clay. It shows the imperfections, it shows its own weakness, and it also shows our mistakes in creating those things. So we want to make sure we followed our techniques really well and we let it dry slowly and completely. 
Once your clay is completely dry, we move into the fourth stage, firing. And this is the transformation stage. It's where your chemical change happens between clay and ceramic. Clay gets fired twice. Once to make the change and once for glazing. The first firing, the one we're talking about, is the bisque firing. So it goes in clay and it comes out ceramic. Very glass-like, very fragile, and very beautiful. The last stage of creating a piece of work from ceramic is glazing. Glazing is pretty much the most dramatic part because it's where you add your color and your shine or your dullness depending on the glaze that you choose. Glaze is a liquid coating that you add to the outside and the inside of a piece of ceramic that um, when it's fired again goes through a chemical change and changes from a liquid into a very very glass like substance that's nice and shiny. Mm -hmm. Once you paint on your glaze, you let it dry. You usually have to do um, one coat, let it dry, another coat, let it dry, two or three different kinds, coats of glaze. We will most likely be painting on our glaze. You can also dip your glaze and spray it on. If you spray it on, it has to be very, very thin. Make sure that you never glaze the bottom of a piece of artwork that it's going to go in the kiln because, like I said, this liquid coating melts and fuses and turns into glass. So if we paint the bottom, then your piece of artwork will fuse to the kiln shelf and will never come off. Once you're done glazing, we put the piece back in the kiln for the second firing. Very often this is a higher temperature firing, um, and that's when the glaze goes through its chemical change and changes from that liquid state to the glass-like state.